All right. Hello, fellow friends and students. Uh, I am Anthony Carter, and we are live for another edition of Quarantine Art Class with your host, Anthony Carter. All right. So we're back. And today, I would like to show and tell a little bit. I would like to discuss sketchbooks, because sketchbooks are very important in the development of your style and your craft. And they're almost like visual diaries. And they mark the development uh, of your um, artistic abilities. And so what I would like to do is, since I've never really done it before with my students, is show you guys a little bit of my artwork that I do in my sketchbooks and how it's helped me as an artist to grow. And, um, so let's get started. I even have sketchbooks, show you how important these are. I even have sketchbooks from my dad. Uh, and he would always carry these around in his pocket uh, everywhere he would go and he would take he would take notes about everything. Um, and he would write down ideas and thoughts and he would record events and quotes and things that people would say that he wanted to remember uh, as well as other lists and information just to go about his daily life. Um, so there's many different ways to use a sketchbook and here's some of them. So this is a sketchbook that I've had for a few years and slowly filled up over time. And you can see there's just little bits and pieces that I do to the cover to decorate it, to make it personal and to show people who I am. Uh, so this is in the opening cover. This is a double knockout. And these are uh, hatching, scratching, chicken scratch drawings that I did in the sketchbook here. So you can tell tell you you just you, you can try out different styles and techniques. And this is just what I call the scribble technique. And you can just layer these scribbles to create these intricate patterns. We'll get a little bit closer so you can see the scribble technique. All right. So keep on moving. I love these sketchbooks because it's on this toned paper. And, and when you add white, it really shines, it really pops out. And this is a drawing of an old woman floating. I like to draw people floating in the air. And I discovered that by filling up a sketchbook. Some of these are just random ideas and thoughts. Others, I'm not thinking at all. Some of these characters, I call them floaters. And sometimes I draw them in different ways so that no matter which way you look at them, you always see, uh, it always looks correct. This is my house back from where I'm from. Kind of looks like my old dog. A boxer, an old man, kung fu fight. And I'm gonna flip through fast on some of these because I wanna get through some of these. And of course, experiment with color, color and light and form. These I did for some of my friends who play instruments. They're in a band and I drew them playing air instruments. And you find sometimes you'll come across an image that resonates with you. And other times you'll just invent things out of your own head. And the, the point is to draw things that you want to remember, to draw things that you want to have in your visual library. And if you have things in your visual library, then you'll be able to pull them up at a later time or whenever you want. And then here's actually, this is a pen and ink drawing using the paint pen technique that we learned the first week. And this is just rubbing the pen around with my hand and also adding some glitter glue. So I would like to show you another sketchbook real quick. 
And this is just kind of free thought, free thinking. Not even really thinking about it, just going, trying new things, experimenting with ideas, writing things down. You want to record your life. And collect ideas and stickers and thoughts and feelings. And you can see I draw the face a lot. The face is uh, something I really focus on because one, it's fun to draw and two, uh, people connect with faces. And here's a sketch I did for a recent mural and drawing sketches is a way to figure out your own visual language. Just like the Egyptians developed hieroglyphs, you can over time develop your own hieroglyphs. Oh, my friend did that. And it's fun to have friends collaborate with you in your sketchbook too. These are people letters. Believe it or not, this was the sketch for a mural or hieroglyphs from my friends. Drawing more faces, thoughts, ideas. This was a collaboration between three or four different artists, all adding color onto this canvas. Some of these are ideas for murals, like this one I did for, I did a large mural with that. Sketching out thoughts, man on a rocket ship, jetpack. And I find inspiration all over the place. I find inspiration from life. I find inspiration from other artists that I look at. I find inspiration in comic books, uh, pamphlets that I find on the street. This was a, a mural that I actually painted. Here is the color scheme. All right, letters, people. And today I would like to work on the face because I know my students, I like to tell them if you can draw the face, then you can draw anything. Same goes for the human body. If you can understand anatomy, then you can understand to draw anything like a tree or a dog, you name it. More floaters with multiple limbs, more letters, more faces, more colors. This one came out of my head. Every, almost all of this comes from my head or from inspiration, people letters, my friend. Another idea for a mural, plans for a future home, working on letters, studying some friends, graffiti artist friends, getting close to the fire here. All right, so we're nearing the end of the sketchbook tour. Here's another mural I did that was a whole city block long. We're gonna start a new project as we go to the end of this sketchbook tour here. And we're gonna draw the face. I like to make sure that you guys know how to draw the face so that you can grow as artists and we can all row together. All right, so here we go. We're going to start drawing the face. To begin, I'm going to use some of our water, uh, our food coloring water in our dollar store sprayer. So I'm going to tone the background. That's what it is. We're going to tone the background. 
And I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of yellow. And now I'm gonna add a little bit of green. I'm just kind of going. You can add whatever colors you want to your background. Look how when I rub it, it comes up a little more. All right, so we're gonna spray, spray, spray. There comes the green. All right, I'm gonna take my paper towel, rub it down. Now we have an interesting background to work on now. I could even go a little bit further, do a little bit more color, but just wanna to tone the background. Now I'm going to take my pencil and we're gonna start with the head, right? So the head, is an oval and I wanna draw a nice big head. And that oval is an egg shape. So, oh, you guys can't really see that. So I'm gonna draw it with my marker. You see this? Yeah, yeah, not so much. Let me get this on. Or I'll do a pen. Whatever you have on hand, is the best thing to use. So use whatever you have available. All right, so you can see I'm drawing my head. You can see the oval here, it stops there. It's an egg shape. If you want to draw the face proportionally where the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and the ears are all in the correct place, you need to learn the proportion. So first, in order to start drawing correctly, we have to divide it down the middle. That line down the middle will help us understand where to place the left and the right hemisphere of, of our face. So now we divide it in half again. And right about here is where our eyes are going to go. Notice how I curved it a little bit. That's going to show us the curvature of the face. All right, so now if I find the middle point from between here and here, that middle point is going to be where the nose goes. So let me look at this. Middle point's about right there. So I make a line. Now, if I find the middle point between here and here, that's going to be where the mouth goes. So I'm gonna make a little mark there. And look, already we have a sort of face. Here's the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. So now we're gonna start drawing the eyes. So to draw the eyes, we're going to put little points here in the middle. You wanna find the center of each hemisphere because our eyes are in the center here and the center here. So put a little dot in the middle and then we're going to draw an arc around it. And if you look at my face, look at how much space is in between my eyes. Well, if you measure the width of your eye, there's a whole nother width of your eye in the middle. So we want to draw our eye big enough so that we can fit an entire eye in the center. All right, so there is the top arc of my eyes. Can you guys see? All right, so next I want to draw the lower arc. So the lower arc is just a reflection of the top. The only difference is that the lower arc of the eye is less dark. Why? Because we have eyelashes. So, and there's also a bit of a shadow that is cast from top of the eye. Now for the nose. The nose, we come down to the middle and I'm just going to add a little shadow, a curvy shadow. See how I cur I'm curving it like that, like a U. And I'm just adding a little bit of shadow. And now I'm going to add a nostril on the right and on the left, or depending on which way you're looking. And I'm just going to add a little bit more shadow. Just like that. So see how simple that is? Next, we add some parentheses, little, little uh, 
curved lines around the, the nose holes for the nostril. I'm gonna shade down here a little bit more to give my nose a little bit more depth. And look, already a nose is starting to form. Next, I'm gonna go down to the mouth line. See this thing here? That's called a fillet. That's the middle of your top lip. And it's right above that mouth line. So if we go above the mouth line, we're gonna make that little curved fillet just like that. And then we need to find the corner of the mouth. Well, look at this. Do you see? No, I'm not just putting a pen in my eye. I'm drawing a straight line from the middle of my eye and it goes down to the corner of the mouth. If you draw a straight line from the middle of the eye and you go down to the mouth line, you can see it hits right here. And so that's how wide we know how to make the mouth. So I'm gonna do that for both sides. So I come down here and I come down here. And now we find the edge of the mouth, see? So now I just connect the top fillet to the edge of the mouth on both sides. And we have a top lip. Now we have to add the bottom. So we just add a curve to the bottom lip there. Look, now we have our face. It just comes together. All you have to do is remember how to place things and the basic shapes that you need to draw in order to make the eyes, nose, and mouth. Simple. All right, so if we wanna draw the ears, look at where the ears go from the eye line down to the nose line. So if I draw a line here and here, I know that this is the eye line and this is the nose line. So I, my curve for the ear is gonna go right there. So I draw the curve of the ear from the eye line to the nose line. And there we have our ears. I'm going to fill them in by adding a little curve on the top. See the little curve I put on the top? Next, we're going to come down and around. Ooh, pen's running out, so I need a different one. Down and around. And now we have our ears. So I'm gonna come back to the eyes and I'm going to add the eyelid. So we have, this is the eyelid here, the top arc and now the eyelid. So I'm going to add the eyelid inside and it's just another arc inside of the eye. Like that. And now we're going to draw the iris and pupil. The iris is the colored part of the eye. And for that, we basically draw parentheses marks underneath the eyelid. Notice how it's not a complete circle. It's only parentheses. I'm gonna come in here a little closer so you can see. Notice how the top of the iris is cut off and the bottom. All right, so now I'm going to draw the highlight of the eye. Let me get a little bit closer here. The highlight of the eye, you can pick any corner of the eye, any area, it just has to be the same for both eyes. So I, I chose to have mine here and here, and I'll mark it with this white out so you can see it a little bit better. All right. And here. Now it's time to color in the pupil, which is the hole that the light goes in. So I draw that pupil and color it in. And you can even add a little bit of shadow here on the top eye. So now let me get in a little closer. All right, so now we have our eyes complete. 
let's come out. Let's add a, a little bit of a bridge of the nose here. A little bridge in the nose between the eyes. We're gonna add some, the lines for the eyelashes and maybe shade in a little here on the top lip, just a little bit because we're gonna add some color now. Just a little bit of shading here and here. All right, now it's time for us to draw the neck. The neck, uh, you know, some people have thick necks, some people have thinner. You just kind of have to gauge how thick you want your neck, how thin. Um, and that varies from person to person. My, this neck here uh, is uh, kind of average. All right, so now we have our head. I'm gonna add some shadow here. And now it's time to color. Now that we have the outline of our, of our person. All right, so in order to color, uh, I'm gonna use my spray bottle to kind of fill in some background areas. I'm gonna use my pens um, that have paint in them, such as these nice jelly roll uh, pens. I really like these for painting with, they're lots of fun. Um, so I'm going to kind of empty this one and let's see, uh, I'm gonna start with the shoulders and then we can start with the background. All right, so I'm just gonna spread that on there. The only problem with this, uh, the only problem with this pen ink is that it only goes so far. So that's kind of cool. Those look like shoulders there. Now that we have the outline of our head, um, all we have to do is really just have fun coloring. So you can use your food coloring too. You have food coloring here. Um, you can mix colors with these. So I have already some yellow, it looks orange here, but it's kind of like a yellow. And you can mix in a little bit of red and it'll make it even more orangish. I guess that red kind of just overpowered it a little bit. But now we have like an orangish red that we can spray from. You can paint with coffee. <laughs> See, I have coffee here. If you make dark coffee, you can paint with coffee too. It, it's like a brown watercolor paint. Uh, try it out. So whatever you can get your hands on, as long as you have a brush or a toothbrush or anything, you can even paint with your fingers, you have paint. Um, Let's open up this green jelly roll and let's paint some of that background a little bit more and then we'll start working on color for the face. Um, if you guys remember uh, from this piece, I used uh, glitter glue for the skin. Um, that's kind of a, a fun way to, to, to paint uh, a flesh tone. So let's get some, some background color going on here. And it's just about experimentation and having fun. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm gonna spray some of this. Some of the orange color that I made. Ooh, and it already, I don't know if you guys can kind of see, but there's this cool texture that's showing up uh, because of the spray and the ink together. Make a nice combination. I'm gonna do some over here. So I like to start with the background because then you can kind of see what the tone of the painting is going to be um, and the overall kind of feel. And if you have uh, available, you know, spray paint or otherwise, you can take it outside and spray a nice little background. I just so happen to have some here that I'm gonna use to tone my painting a little bit more. Um, use whatever you have available, whatever you have at your disposal is what you wanna use and see. We only have a few more minutes left, but with those few more minutes, um, I'm gonna try to finish up this canvas here. Maybe the spray nozzle that works. Here we go. So 
All right, just a little bit will do. So now we have the nice gradient in our background. Okay, so now I want to make a brownish kind of a color. Um, let me try using this coffee. All right, coffee time. Let's paint with coffee, guys. It's toning it. I have a little bit of green from my brush on here already, but you can see it's already toning my, I want a nice shadow under here. If you let it dry, then more layers uh, are gonna make it darker. So I'm just gonna start with some basic layers of coffee. And then I'm gonna go in and add some actual paint. So we have four minutes left. I need to add some hair and some color on that shirt. Now that it's wet, we can try adding a little glue. Let's add some glue. I think we need it to come out a little faster. So I'm gonna open it up and just kind of dump it out. Let's see what happens. There, that's fun. Still have coffee on here. I'm gonna kind of paint with this glue. This glue, when it dries, it has kind of a pink tone to it, but it also there's glitter in there. So it's gonna have a cool shine to it. And then when it's also dry, you can paint over it and add another layer. So we only have three minutes left but I'm gonna to try to get done as much as I can in those three minutes. And then our next class, you can see the final development. And I encourage you guys to try this at home. And if you don't have paint, you can add food coloring to glue. In fact, here, let me try that right now with our last few minutes. I'm gonna add some, uh, take some glue and put it on my little palette here. And now I'm going to add some pink, or sorry, some red. I'm thinking that the red with the white glue will actually make a kind of a pinkish color. So let's see, I added the food coloring to the glue. And sure enough, we're getting kind of a pinkish color. It's obviously more red, but that's cool. I can paint the shirt. Look, you can paint with glue, guys. You can. All you need is food coloring or some pigment with a, a binder that sticks. And you can find inspiration everywhere. I encourage you guys to find inspiration at home, I, online, look at some artists and do what you can to make art with what you can. It's not what you got, it's what you do with what you got that matters. All right, you guys, this is quarantine art at its finest. And we're making creative possibilities happen because when you are limited, you are forced to be creative, right? What do they say? Necessity is the mother of all invention. So if there's a will, there's a way. And if you guys want to find a way to paint, we can even add some white out to this paint here. I know it's kind of looking crazy right now but trust me, it's all gonna to come together. It always does, you just have to trust the process. All right, we have one minute left. And with that minute, I'm going to add the hair. This is a speed painting. I'm gonna blend that in a little bit more. Need the lips to be red. One minute. All right, here we go. Purple hair, purple hair don't care. And that's gonna branch out because big hair, big mind. All right, we're gonna do a little bit of rubbing in there. 
a little bit of shadow. That actually kind of looks cool. We're getting funky. And that's what it's all about. All right, let me clean this up. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. Have a great time. I hope you had fun. And see you next time. I'll fix this up and make it look better. I'll show you next time. All right. Have fun, everyone. Stay safe.